Yeah, so, um, so there are a lot of things that are challenging about it. Um, the first is that for TB treatment, you really have to use a rifamycin-containing um, treatment regimen. So you use isoniazid, rifampicin, perizinamide, and ethanetol, but the rifampicin is a very potent inducer of metabolizing enzymes and transporters. And so um, when you have, when you're taking rifampin, the drug concentrations of many companion drugs can be decreased, and that's true of many antiretroviral medications. And so um, you know, we, when we uh, develop new treatments for tuberculosis, we always have to pe keep HIV-infected persons in mind because they bear a disproportionate brunt of, um, of TB disease, as, as you know, um, and, and of deaths from TB. So the challenges are um, dealing with the drug interactions, and so sometimes you, have, so you can't use drugs together, or sometimes you have to mitigate the drug interaction by adjusting a, a dose of, a, of an HIV medication. Um, the other challenges are pill burden, you know, for patients to take four drugs for their TB treatment plus their HIV drugs, um, you know, that's a lot of medicines for someone to take. Uh, sometimes there are overlapping toxicities, so some of the HIV drugs and some of the TB drugs have common side effects, and so you have to consider that. And then the other, the fourth thing is really coordination of the programs, because a lot of times the TB program and the HIV program are not closely linked. I mean, in some countries they're doing a better job of, or in some locations they're doing a better job of really um, linking those programs uh, so that they're providing comprehensive interactive care uh, but oftentimes the TB program is separate from the HIV program and so to manage both um, diseases and the potential side effects people might experience is a bit challenging across um, those two um, those two groups.